y'all, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. Tonight, we are reading in Ephesians 3. It is a Wednesday night. My sister is still here. She had a lot of teeth pulled, and she's in a lot of pain. Um, And I think she thought she was going to be able to just jump up and just do anything, and she's not really bouncing back that fast. And um, anyway, her mouth is so swollen and her and her chin that her face looks really big and kind of square. It's really strange looking. Bless her heart. She's got a lot of bruising and um, it was a really, really rough day for her. And so last night I didn't do the Bible study. I just took care of her. And today uh, she jumped up this morning and she started emptying the dishwasher. And I think she thought she was going to be able to go home today. And uh, she went outside, and I was in here making up my bed, and I went in there, and she was laid back down in the bed, and she went, all I did is load the dishwasher, and I feel so bad. And I said, Melissa, you need to rest today. But she bleeds a lot like my May does. May actually, when she was, uh, well, it's been since 2015, she was actually diagnosed with a blood disorder which is kind of like being a free bleeder. And um, and so we watched it close, and then she became more like on the cusp line of it. So she's not, has she really don't have to worry about it this much unless she has a surgery or something like that. And they give her a drug that's called some kind of acid, which helps thicken up the blood. Anyway, my sister's always been that way. She, she, uh, hemorrhaged when she had her tonsils out. She hemorrhaged when she had one of her babies. She's always got dry sockets. She's just always had a lot of issues like that. And so um, I was worried about her bleeding too much too. But she's doing better. She's starting to heal. And the bruising and the swelling will just have to run its course. So y'all keep her in your prayers. That's my sister Melissa. She's actually in Mama's room in the bed talking on the phone right now. So I didn't want to do my Bible study in there with her. I've tried to kind of give her her space so that she can rest. Um, and I made her some chicken noodle soup today. So um, she had 18 teeth pulled. That's a lot of teeth. Bless her heart. So tonight we are going to be reading in Ephesians 3. It's a really beautiful part of the Bible. It is a prayer. And... Um, our Bible study only talks about two verses, but since it's a prayer, I think we should read the prayer uh, so that we kind of get the gists of it. Um, and, you know, our Bible study is just in Jesus, our perfect hope, uh, which we're all Stanley. And today is uh, August the 13th, Beyond Imagination. And we're going to be reading Ephesians 3. I'm going to start. Um, if you've got a Bible, you can turn with me. And if not, you know, that's fine, too. But we're going to start with verse number 14. I'm going to give you all a couple of minutes to turn to that. That's Ephesians chapter 14. Um, if you have a hard time reading or you have a hard time thinking about what you're reading and your mind seems to wander, I would recommend that you get an audio app to read to you at night when you go to bed. Put on some earphones Close your eyes and listen to the Word of God, and it will help strengthen you um, all the way around, okay? So if you have a hard time reading, because a lot of people do, I mean, they have, they, they get distracted, or they just, in general, cannot focus, and if you are like that, you may find the audio, uh, you may find that you really enjoy it. There are some audio Bibles that have music and animation type in the background, I personally am not that crazy about those, but now a lot of people love it because it's like a story that comes to life. So you should download their free. A lot of them are free. You should download them. If you've got Amazon Prime, lots of times you can get free audio books. Uh, so you should take, you know, take advantage of it and listen to it. If you go to work and you're driving in your car and you've got a long ride home, take advantage of it. That used to be when I listened to the Bible when I would work. At the time, that was a long time ago, and we had the Bible on cassette, you know, not CDs, but actually small cassettes that went the cassette player in the car. My car actually still plays a cassette because I drive a 1999. 
So I would buy the Bible on cassette and I would listen to it on my way to work and on the way home. And those are great ways to listen to the Word of God and take the time out of the, your day to do that. A lot of people pray in their car, you know, when they're going back and forth to places. And um, so listening to the Word of God is a great way. Some people have never even thought about it. It's a great time to do it. Um, okay, we're going to start reading Ephesians 3. This is a prayer that Paul is praying for the church. If you are a believer in Christ, you are part of the church. Whether you go to a local assembly or not, I would wish and hope that you would because that's why Jesus died. He died for the church. Uh, the church is a big deal to him, and he loves us very much. And this is a prayer for us um, that are saved and part of the church, okay? I want you to listen to how beautiful it is. It's not very long. It's just beautiful words, okay? It says, for this reason, this is Paul. It says, for this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might, through his spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. That you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Now that is just one of the most beautiful things in the whole Bible to read when you are a part of the church and you are a child of God and you have been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ because if you listen closely to the words, I'm going to kind of go through it uh, just kind of like a phrase at a time and kind of just kind of let you kind of meditate and understand. Um, he says, for this reason I bow my knees. And really, I don't bow my knees enough, you know, um, but he says that he's bowing his knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So he's bowing and probably on his knees to pray. It says, for whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. So he lets us know that the family of God in heaven and earth is named after Jesus Christ, okay? He says that he would grant you, which he, being Jesus Christ, would grant us according to the riches of his glory, which is saying a whole mouthful because his riches of his glory is enormous, to be strengthened with the might through his spirit in the inner man. So he's saying to us that he's praying that God would strengthen us with the might of his spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, through the inner man, which is our spiritual birth, our spiritual side, our spiritual nature. Okay, that's a big thing. And so he's letting us, this says so much just in a few verses. It is unbelievable. It lets us know that Jesus Christ is Lord. It lets us know that uh, the heavens and earth are named after him. It lets us know that we can be strengthened with his might through the Holy Spirit. It lets us know about the inner man, which is our spiritual side. It says that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And he lets us know that Christ dwells in us through faith, not by sight, but faith. Okay? That you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all of the saints what is the width and length and depth and height? I mean, he's letting us know that he wants us to comprehend with all the saints, which are all of our family in Christ. We are a saint because we are, you know, part of the family of God. I know we don't act like saints and we're still carnal here on the earth, 
but we're still part, our spiritual side does live with him in heavenly places. So he lets us know, he wants us to know the width, the length, the depth, the height of Christ's love, which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. So he lets us know that his love passes knowledge. His love passes um, the knowledge that people have here on the earth. Um, the wisdom from God is completely different than the wisdom we get from book knowledge in the world. And he lets us know that in this passage. Then he goes on to say, and this is what our Bible study is about. Now to him, which is Christ, who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, power of the Holy Spirit that works in us, to him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. So I want you to take into consideration right here when he says that he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, he is referencing the church, not our personal wants that we want, but his work, okay? That is Christ's work, the church. So remember that and don't try to apply that to things that you want. It's more about Christ why we're here, his work, the church, okay? So um, it's just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. If you have a chance tonight to sit down and read it, meditate on it, do it. Because this passage from 14 to 20, that's Ephesians 3, says so much and shows us how so much in that little part of how powerful our God is, how real he is, how real his promises are, how we do have a spiritual nature. There is a spiritual side to us in the inner man, how the Holy Spirit works with us and helps us in our everyday life. So I'm going to read to you now our Bible study after you kind of know where we're coming from tonight. And it's called Beyond Imagination, and it is beyond our imagination. This is a spiritual thing. If you are not a Christ, if you are not born again in Christ, it is hard for you to understand something that is truly spiritual because it is spiritual. It is not part of a natural thing that a man or woman would want to talk about, think about, understand. So remember that beyond imagination, okay? To, and then he says, have you ever considered the overwhelming hope of today's verse? God can take us places we could never dream of going. His wisdom and power opens doors we may have thought permanently locked. God has a way of providing opportunities and blessings that exceed our imaginations. The problem with this, however, is that when we do not see what we want to come to pass, we often fail to trust him. Although he may be providing something far better than we have been requesting, we may be tempted to think he's failed us, especially if we've been waiting for a long time. Yet Jesus told his disciples to seek God first. And whatever else they needed would be given to them. This is because when you focus completely on him, he plants his own outstanding desires in your heart. God's blessings are wonderful, satisfying, and able to exceed your hopes. So don't fret. Wait for him to provide abundantly beyond what you can imagine. And the blessings that he gives you will certainly fill your heart with boundless joy. Jesus, I want your desires for me. Thank you for providing beyond what I can imagine. That's his prayer at the end of his Bible study tonight. And so remember, he's letting us know that just because we don't see what he's doing in our lives don't mean he's not doing something. 
And remember, the most important thing that he could do in our lives is to try to make us seek him more and love others more, okay? So if our, if our wants are selfish or more personable, uh, sometimes they may not be exactly what God wants for us. But that does not mean that he wants something bad for us. It actually means he wants something more for us. So if you're having a hard time right now, if it seems like you're in a time in your life where God's just not answering any of your prayers, think about your relationship with God. Think about where you are with God and ask God to help you love him more, read about him more, long for him more. I'm not trying to say that you're being punished or anything like that. I'm just letting you know that God always gives us what we need. But there's only certain times that he gives us what we want and the desires of our heart. And remember that those desires and wants sometimes have to be in his will in order for them to be answered. Not always. Sometimes he gives us desires that we don't really have to you know, maybe a more of a personal desire. He's done it for me several times, and I could tell you about them. And I know they were from him because it was had to be God. You know, you've had those times in your life where you knew it had to be God. Um, so remember that. And I can remember um, when I was really more of aware of God working around me. Um, when I was closer to him, the closer you get to God, because I've been there and I know what I'm talking about. The closer you get to him, the more you can see him around you, the more you can see him working around you. Even if it's as simple as someone holding the door open for you. Don't ever think that God can't work in all those types of ways. He can be everywhere around you, working through this spirit. He's telling us in the scripture to bless you through other believers and bless you. Um, I mean, he just tells us straight out right here. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. That you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, the length, and the depth, and the height to know the love of Christ. I mean, it's just the most beautiful thing you've ever read in your life. And to think that we as saints, children of God, the church, the bride of Christ, could minister to each other through him being his spirit within our hearts and bless each other. That's what he wants, okay? So um, just remember that. I hope y'all have a blessed evening. I hope you take the time to meditate on God's word. I hope you listen to me and maybe download the Bible and listen to it if you have a hard time reading because I've always been the kind of person, even when I was in college, that if I really wanted to read something, now when I was a little girl, I could read. I read all the time, but as I got older, my mind began to wander, and it was really hard for me to stay focused, um, and I've always been very hyper, just in general, so um, when I was in college, I learned real quick, there was no way I could ever graduate in an engineering school unless I figured out a way to get some of that knowledge in my head and keep it there, and I had to apply it, and the only way I knew to do it was to read out loud. So when I was in college, almost every every book that I had, now they don't have books so much, they use the internet, but I read them out loud. I had to read them out loud to stay focused and to study, and I would take notes as I read it out loud, and that's how I made better grades in college. It was just the way I had to do it. So if you are like me, you will probably like the audio versions of the Bible, or you may just want to sit down and read out loud so that you don't get so distracted, but it really helps a lot. So I hope that I've encouraged you tonight as a child of God to be excited about the power 
of the living God, the power of Jesus Christ that lives in us, how much he can indwell the height, the depth, I mean, the fullness of his love and grace can abound and be abundant in our lives if we let it. But we have to let it, y'all. It's a faith thing. It's a spiritual thing. It's not something that he's just going to come down and shine a big light on us and blind us like he did the, the Apostle Paul. He, we've got his word now. We don't have, he don't have to do that to us. So it's up to us to let him speak to us. It's up to us to pick up the book and listen to what he has to say to us and not just us talking to him. Because we all know with a relationship, when you only have a one-sided relationship where we just pray to him and pray to him and pray to him and he never gets to speak to us, um, it's pretty sad. And even if you're listening to me and you're getting to hear his word from me and I get to go to the pastor and hear his word from the pastor, it's still not the same. I'm sure he would love it so much more. If we would just pick up the word of God and listen to what he has to say to us each and every day. And you don't have to get something out of the same thing. Just try it. You know, just try your best. Um, make a journal. Take some notes. It, it, it'll it help you a lot. It helps me as a mother. It helps me as a friend. It helps me as a wife. It helps me as a person. Um, and I need it because I've never been... Um, I've just always needed God, and I think we all do, and if we say, I remember when I was younger, I didn't think I needed him that much, and um, I mean, I really didn't when I was really younger, and uh, now I look back and I know how much I needed him, and if you are in denial of thinking that you need Christ or only weak people need spiritual things, then um, wisdom comes by, uh, wisdom comes from God. And the only way that you can truly be wise, as wise as you may think you are, book-wise, it doesn't matter. You need to read the Word of God. Don't get an opinion and don't make up your mind by something somebody else tells you. If you don't read the Word of God, read it first and then make your decision. Let God tell you what is real, not somebody else. So um, I had to do that myself. Once I got old enough, I was like, you know, I went through all that stuff everybody else does and went to college and thought, you know, is this, why is there so many religions and why, why is one right when one is wrong? And religion is one thing, but the word of God is real and the word of God is true. And regardless of which religion you've been raised up in, you should pick up the word of God and let him tell you what's right, because that's what matters the most. I hope y'all have a good night. I hope that I have encouraged you in the Word of God, we should never be ashamed of our salvation. We should never be ashamed of the God of the universe, the God that saved us with his power and might. And we should be excited to tell other people about God and heaven and what he has planned for his children. Um, let's say our prayers, and I hope y'all have a blessed night, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for tonight, and we thank you for being with us um, as we come together to worship you and read about your word. I pray that you would be with everyone here tonight. I know that each and every one of them have different needs, wants, and feelings in their heart, Lord, and only you know those individual thoughts and needs. And I pray that you would minister to each and every one of us um, tonight. Be with Melissa as she uh, continues to heal and we got good news with Chris's father, um, and we thank you for that. And we just thank you for the good news and the bad news, the good times and the bad times. And we thank you just for the fact that we're able to get up and breathe and live in a country where we are free to worship you. And we also thank you, Lord, for loving us even while we are yet we're, we're yet sinners. You sent your son to die for us, and we thank you for that. Um, in Christ's name we all pray. Amen. I hope y'all have a good night. And um, I guess I'll go sit with my sister a little more, talk to her tonight. Um, I love y'all very much. Y'all have sweet dreams. And we'll see you tomorrow on Family Food Fight. Um, I, I, I think, I'm sure we'll do an after the uh, episode show. So we'll talk to y'all then. Love ya. Bye.